Hey guys, welcome back to Anime Gossips. This is my recap for the anime I was reincarnated as the seventh prince. The story begins with a boy who seems to be in trouble. Crows are flying above his head, and a group of people standing in front of him are laughing. The leader of the group asks the boy to use his magic as a gift to save his life. The boy uses his magic and tries to attack the leader with a fireball, but it doesn't do any damage. They start laughing at him again, saying this is the most that a commoner can do. The leader tells him that the great father of sorcery has said that for a magic user, it becomes important to have blood relation, talent, and focus to be strong. He asks him not to misunderstand him. For a magic user, effort should be the first priority. But magic will never shine for a commoner like him. He uses his magic and attacks the boy. The attack strikes, and he starts screaming so loud that crows fly away and everything is disturbed. He starts burning but suddenly realizes that magic is so powerful, which can only be used by a gifted noble. He feels it is so hot, painful, and surprisingly beautiful as well. He finds it amazing. As he turns into ashes, he thinks if he has a wish, then he wants to learn and master the magic. Elsewhere, a baby opens his eyes and sees some maids standing in front of him. He gets confused and starts asking himself where he is, and who these giants are. He thinks they are the enemy and tries to defend himself with fireball magic. He then realizes that his hands are smaller, but manages to strike a powerful fireball attack on the roof, causing serious damage. Meanwhile, people standing outside the castle see the fireworks and start celebrating. A kid starts running with joy, saying that it's a great day as it's the birth of Prince Lloyd, the Saloon Kingdom's seventh prince. Back in the castle, the maids standing around Lloyd seem surprised by the fireball attack, which breaks the roof of the castle. Lloyd smiles while smoke comes from his finger, as a small magic does so much destruction. After some years, peace and happiness spread throughout the kingdom. People are happily doing business and walking around. Back in the castle, maids are searching for Lloyd everywhere. They decide to go in another direction to search for the prince. Meanwhile, Lloyd is hiding behind a statue and finds that the maids are gone. He starts running in the opposite direction where he is stopped by two men. Lloyd asks them to keep silent and not to tell the maids that they saw him. They agree with Lloyd and ask him to join them in hunting to experience some royal things. However, Lloyd runs away from there. One of them asks why they need his favor as the seventh prince will not be able to get the crown. His senior replies that he is not like others. He started speaking shortly after birth. He reads spell books instead of picture books like others. Also, he refuses breast milk like the way any gentleman would. And more than that, he thinks Prince Lloyd is the reincarnation of the great sage William Bordeaux. But his friend tells him it's ridiculous as he is the reincarnation of a great sage. Meanwhile, Lloyd runs downstairs and says he's right that he is someone reincarnated, as he was just a commoner in his past life. Elsewhere, maids are searching for him and asking him to come out. But Lloyd is busy thinking about why his past memories are still intact and wonders why he was born as the seventh son of the royal family. He refuses to care about these things and follows the same philosophy he did in his past life, finding out how awesome magic can be in the palace. He enters a library and is amazed by the magic books collection, thinking it would have all magic information. He pulls out a book, but Silpha catches him from behind. Silpha and Lloyd then engage in sword fighting. Lloyd stops and asks why he needs to learn sword fights as he is the seventh prince and far away from getting the throne. Silpha replies that it's important for Lloyd to learn handling swords as a member of the royal family. Three years ago, she was in charge of teaching him, and now this has become the purpose of her life. Lloyd understands that if he doesn't show any good results to Silpha, she will make him practice until evening. They start practicing again, and this time Silpha praises his moves. Lloyd observes how Silpha attacks, so he starts using control-type magic in which he can trace all of Silpha's moves. It's like fighting a mirror image of her. In other words, he is cheating, because he wants to go and read. But Lloyd keeps losing against her attacks. He finds that her stamina, height, and strength are higher than his, which is why he keeps losing. He can copy her techniques. But these physical differences will always make him lose. Lloyd uses biotic growth, strength enhancement, and levitation magic to match Silpha's levels. He starts matching her level and giving her tough competition. They start fighting seriously. Lloyd thinks that he is copying her attack and she is fighting a mirror image. But what if he suddenly made a different move? He releases the trace magic and goes for an attack, feeling sorry for Silpha. 
But Silpha counters his attack and tells him that she knows he is cheating, and ends the battle with a hit on his head. Silpha says that she already noticed the difference in his attacks, and how he grew the wooden sword and levitated to match the height difference, and was almost able to match the differences in their level. Silpha suddenly becomes happy, saying that he is so amazing and talented that he can use two magic spells at a time, which is even difficult for the court's magician. She tells him that she will not force him anymore. He can grow on his own. She blesses him for his future and says she will keep him company. Lloyd finds that she didn't notice his physical enhancement and control magic, as he is using four spells at a time, and he will keep it a secret. Silpha takes him to the maid's bath, and the maids are enjoying as Silpha is helping Lloyd to get a bath. However, he wants to study magic. He seems frustrated and asks to be left alone as he can bathe by himself. Silpha refuses, and says if she does that, he will go and read books only, instead of taking a bath. Now other maids try to make Lloyd scared. If he behaves like bad boys, then the demon from the Forbidden Library will gobble him up. Lloyd gets surprised as there's a Forbidden Library with a demon. They say a long time ago Saloon was nearly destroyed. And after many sacrifices of countless mages, the demon named Grimoire was sealed away in a book, which was kept in the Forbidden Library. Silpha says it might be a made-up story, even if it's real. What could a demon that's already sealed in a book do? And that's ridiculous. Even Prince Lloyd wouldn't be afraid of him. However, Lloyd seemed afraid, and the maids got worried for him, and everyone asked him to sleep with them if he is afraid. But Silpha says as she is his teacher, he will sleep in her room only. They decide that Lloyd will sleep in the maids' dorms, but Silpha refuses. Lloyd sneaks away from them and gets excited for the underground forbidden library. At night, Lloyd goes down the castle to find the forbidden library and uses an air class spell, concealment, to become invisible to others. There are two guards there. One of them seems tired, and the other tells him to stay awake, as the demon sealed inside can shake the whole kingdom if it's released. Listening to what the guard says, Lloyd confirms that the library is downstairs. The guards say even if someone passes them to enter the library. Then there is a powerful sealing spell on the entrance which is cast by ten strong mages to create an unbreakable barrier. However, Lloyd breaks the barriers easily using his magical power, and enters the library. It gets him excited as he has been living in the castle for ten years, and found this exciting library today. Lloyd says he will replace the barrier outside the door after reading the books. He sits down to read a book, but suddenly the demon starts moving the book in which he sealed. Grimoire tells him he's impressed as he was able to break the door's seal. Grimoire asks Lloyd to free him in exchange for gold. As the seal is getting weaker with time, it will surely break soon. Lloyd picks the gold and says that the gold is created from dust by creation magic. Lloyd says he is also going to replace the seal once he finishes reading books. He says his study of magic is based outside the kingdom, and he can't let some dangerous demon threaten it. Grimoire says that the magician who sealed him lived centuries ago, and he doesn't have any problem with today's people. However, Lloyd says he doesn't believe him. Grimoire offers him to teach ancient magic that was lost hundreds of years ago, in exchange for breaking the seal, and he thinks Lloyd is interested in it. After hearing about ancient magic, he asks Grimoire if he'll teach him. Grimoire says Lloyd has a lot of potential to learn them. Lloyd remembers what happened in the past. As the leader told him magic will never smile upon a commoner like him. Back to the present. Lloyd tells Grimoire if magic is linked to lineage and talent, then he's a more privileged body than any commoner. Lloyd makes a key with magic and breaks the seal. Grimoire can't believe that Lloyd has broken the seal. Lloyd asks Grimoire to teach ancient magic like he promised, but Grimoire attacks him with Arctis Obscura, a powerful magic attack. However, Lloyd creates a barrier around him to defend against the attack, and gets amazed to see this type of unique spell. He asks Grimoire to show him some more magic like this. Grimoire gets furious and starts attacking him multiple times, but it doesn't make a single scratch on Lloyd's barrier. Lloyd gets excited after seeing the magic and wants to feel the magic by himself. He finds this as a bad habit which can finish him again, but he still picks the magic in his finger and feels the pain and how beautiful it looks. Lloyd asks him to show what else he can do. Grimoire gets angry and starts a dual incantation and makes a powerful fireball attack called Arctis Obscura Forta. Lloyd starts thinking that this attack is stronger as it is a double incantation of the spell, which will lead to more damage. But the attack leaves no damage on Lloyd's barrier. Grimoire is shocked that his most powerful attack can't cause any damage to Lloyd. 
He praises Grimoire's magic and finds it interesting. He says it must have been a lot of fun to learn magic. Grimoire gets scared and tries to run away, but he's stopped by a barrier. It's created by Lloyd which stops him from going toward the castle. Grimoire asks if he thinks that he is going to run away, but Lloyd says of course not. He just wants to be careful. As in the past, he made a big mistake, blowing up the castle's rooftop. Grimoire gets angry and plans to attack Lloyd, but Lloyd stops him, saying he already knows that. Lloyd asks him to show his defensive power against his attack. He uses a powerful magic attack called Pelance and Sinis on Grimoire. Grimoire is surprised by the power of the attack and gets defeated. Lloyd comes near Grimoire and asks him why he didn't defend. After some time, Lloyd starts restoring the library to its original state. Grimoire calls Lloyd his master and says that he has perfectly restored the room after it had been blown to bits. He says he hasn't met a magician like him before. Lloyd praises him and tells him that demons can't be eliminated with magic. Grimoire replies they don't, but it hurts them. Lloyd wonders how many attacks he can survive, but Grimoire gets scared of him and says he will obey him and serve him as a familiar. Lloyd asks him to turn small and come in his pocket. Grimoire turns small, thinking he will take control of his mind and occupy his body. But after coming close to Lloyd, he starts shaking with fear. As Lloyd's mana is so dense, Lloyd asks Grimoire if he has a cold, but Grimoire says he is alright, and asks Lloyd to call him Grim from now on. He finds Lloyd is sure a monster with high magical powers, and decides to stay obedient as of now. Lloyd is excited as he's going to read magical books in the Forbidden Library. After returning from the Forbidden Library, Lloyd is reading magic books in the castle library. His older brother Albert enters the library, and Lloyd is happy to see him. In the training ground, Albert starts practicing his magic. He hits the target perfectly, impressing everyone. Lloyd says that Albert is really good at magic, and mentions that Albert is the second prince for the saloon throne, and he is also physically capable as well as smart. People talk about the possibility of him becoming the next king. Lloyd also mentions that Albert has the authority to access all the facilities of the castle, and he invites him to join them. Lloyd says this is a rare chance that he is allowed to use magic inside the castle, and he is grateful for this. Albert tells Lloyd that it's his turn to use magic, and Lloyd agrees. Lloyd says he doesn't care about being the king of Saloon. Also, he doesn't want to get involved in the race for the throne. All he wants is to study magic without getting people's attention. He thinks he only needs to aim correctly to hit the targets. Grimm says it's hard to hit them without causing damage. Lloyd uses his magic and hits all the targets. Everyone standing there starts clapping. One man says hitting targets seems to be the best Lloyd can do. Grimm gets frustrated and calls the man a dumbass, saying Lloyd actually managed to graze all the targets, which is impressive. Lloyd thinks it's good to add rotation to fireballs because it makes them more stable without using much energy. Grimm thinks Lloyd is crazy about magic. Albert tells Lloyd he's taking a break, and Lloyd can play around if he wants. Lloyd tells Grimm it's great because he has an empty place to practice, and he wants to try many things. He says for now he wants to try doing a double incantation at once like Grimm. Grimm says it's impossible because only demons can do that, since they have two mouths. Lloyd uses magic and puts Grimm in his hand and says it worked. Grimm warns that if someone can do that, they shouldn't try to absorb a demon into their body. Lloyd says, let's try it out. Lloyd asks Grimm if he can use pulants and sinis. Grimm reminds Lloyd that he's a demon, so casting advanced magic will be easy. And then they start casting the spell. But Grimm seems shocked, and Lloyd asks what is wrong with him. Grimm says that he should be the one asking questions, and asks what exactly he was doing. Lloyd says that it was just a spell stack. Spell stacking is a method to combine the incantations of multiple spells to make them faster. Lloyd is trying a hundred different incantations using this method. Grimm is surprised and says it doesn't work like that. He explains that a single stack usually has two or three spells at once, but Lloyd says it'll take forever this way. Lloyd realizes that he can talk from his hand too, and he can talk from both mouths at once. Grimm asks if he's trying to cast two advanced incantations at the same time. Lloyd says sorry as he needs to use the hand for some time. He starts casting two incantations at once. Pelance in Sinis and Aquilance Cascadia. Grimm gets shocked and asks what's happening, saying it's unbelievable that Lloyd is using two different advanced spells together. Grimm notices a huge surge of magical energy. He thinks it's not safe to aim this powerful attack at anything, not even a target. Lloyd uses the magic, creating a massive magic circle, and aims the attack towards the sky. Meanwhile, inside the castle, 
An underling asked Prince Albert why he is giving so much attention to the seventh prince. Albert replies that they didn't recognize talent. He explains Lloyd's fireball grazed all the targets in the same way because he did it intentionally. Albert believes Lloyd is a prodigy, and he might become a grand sage someday, and he thinks that Lloyd would be a great asset to him someday. The other underling says it isn't surprising that Prince Albert could obtain the service of a grand sage. Albert denies this, saying he just wants to get along with his brother. He mentions that Lloyd might have already hit all the targets by now. The first underling thinks this is an exaggeration. Looking out the window, he asks if the sun has already gone down. Meanwhile, Grimm was surprised by Lloyd's attack. He says, Lloyd blew a hole in the sky, and now night is shining through. Lloyd looks at the sky and starts panicking. Grimm is amazed, thinking what's going on with Lloyd. Next day, Grimm is reading the newspaper, where it mentions a mysterious hole in the heavens. Is it bizarre weather or a bad omen? He shows it to Lloyd and mentions that his yesterday's stunt is in the news. Lloyd says he was panicked for a moment there. Suddenly, he notices something on the newspaper and points out a news article about an adventure company that cleared a difficult dungeon and brought back powerful items. Lloyd suggests they should go to a dungeon, but Grimm reminds him that he can't leave because everyone will freak out if they don't see him in the castle. Lloyd says to him that a little magic and ingenuity will take care of that. Then Lloyd uses a spell to turn an acorn into a perfect replica of himself. Grimm is amazed by the magic and says it's incredible, and the replica looks exactly like Prince Lloyd. Lloyd says this replica looks exactly like the real thing, not just in how it looks but also in the way its resin bones and skin mimic the real ones. And even the roots act as a model of the circulatory system. It can even make some simple movements by itself. Grimm thinks having a double like this could help him escape, but Lloyd denies it, saying if it were that easy, he would have done it already. As the real problem is Silpha, Lloyd says that Silpha notices everything about him, as she noticed that he has grown by about 0.07 millimeters recently. He doubts he can fool her with a copy that can only act silly, which is why he left Grimm with the replica. Lloyd leaves the castle by flying. While flying, he asks Grimm if he can hear him. Grimm replies that he can, and the picture is clear through his one eye too. Lloyd asks how things are going on Grimm's end. Grimm says he's not sure, but he thinks things are going fine. The maids notice Lloyd and say that the prince is paying more attention to his looks today, and his collar isn't turned up like usual, and they find him really cute. Grimm thinks that Lloyd doesn't seem to understand when to stop, as he was putting Grimm's mind into the doll and then attaching his body separately. Lloyd asks Grimm to keep an eye on Silpha and act like him. Grimm agrees, and he finds the puppet amazing, which also has mana circulation. Grimm feels relieved that Lloyd is out of the picture, so he can do what he wants without interruptions. Lloyd tells Grimm that he's really happy to have him as his familiar, and he's counting on him. Grimm tells Lloyd not to worry about it, just go and come back quickly. Lloyd realizes that he left the castle without any trouble, but he doesn't know where the dungeon is. Suddenly, he sees a girl being chased by monsters. The girl fights back with bare hands against the monsters and defeats them all. Lloyd notices how she's breathing and thinks she must be a skilled martial artist. Lloyd says he read in a book that in foreign countries, people use an energy called Ki through their bodies by breathing to perform amazing techniques. The girl sees Lloyd hiding and asks who he is. Lloyd is surprised that she was able to see him from far away. He decides to ask her about the dungeon and key. Grimm warns Lloyd that if he goes out now, he'll be recognized as the seventh prince of Saloon. The girl sees him as an enemy because Lloyd didn't respond. She quickly moves towards Lloyd, ready to attack. Lloyd changes his appearance and introduces himself as Robert, saying he is a rookie adventurer. The girl is shocked by his looks. Lloyd used a magic spell to change how he looked but he could only transform into people he had seen before. Lloyd combined two spells which he learned from Grimm to create a completely new form that nobody had seen before. In one hand, Lloyd held his original appearance, and in the other hand, he had Albert's body. By merging these, he created a unique body. She says her name is Tao, and she is a B-rank adventurer. Lloyd asks Grimm if she had noticed anything suspicious, but Grimm says it doesn't seem like that. Tao finds Lloyd hot and thinks that she has spent 18 years training before leaving her martial arts school hoping to meet someone. She has been disappointed because guys always liked delicate girls, but now she felt lucky. She decides Lloyd would be her boyfriend. Lloyd suggests clearing a dungeon together, and Tao instantly agrees. They enter a dungeon, and Tao starts showing off her skills. She asks Lloyd if he sees how strong she is, and if he has fallen for her because of it. Meanwhile, Lloyd is busy collecting glowing rocks, not paying attention to Tao. 
Lloyd asks Tao if she is adventuring alone, and she says yes, as she hasn't found any good men yet. But Grimm wonders why Tao has chosen Lloyd. While eating, Lloyd, who is transformed into Robert, asks Tao if she uses Ki when she attacks the monsters. Tao asks if Robert knows about Ki, because not many people on the continent are familiar with it. Lloyd explains that Ki is similar to mana and magic, and how her breathing is important to use Ki. Tao is impressed to see that Robert noticed her using this. She explains that her training revolves around breathing and using it to circulate Ki, which gives her extraordinary power. Tao says that feeling the key in her body takes a lot of practice, but she has a feeling that he'll be able to use it easily. Robert starts practicing breathing. Tao notices it when Robert seems to be struggling. She asks him if he is just doing key breathing. Robert agrees and says he's trying to copy the way she did it. But it's pretty hard. Tao is amazed but explains that if he is not used to it, key breathing can make his lungs feel like they're on fire. However, Robert feels a separate energy in his body from mana. Robert believes in himself that he can use this power and it will be useful for magic. Tao is impressed and offers to teach Robert more about Ki. Robert thanks Tao, and she asks him to keep up the breathing until they leave the dungeon. Meanwhile, Grimm starts thinking that Lloyd is weird. He's living the good life, but he doesn't care about any of it, and he only shows interest in studying magic. Silpha finds Lloyd and walks near him, without realizing it is a clone. Meanwhile, in the dungeon, Tao uses a powerful Ki blast to defeat the dungeon boss, Grey Wolf. They decide to open the treasure chest now as the boss is finished. Tao says that the treasure inside the undeveloped dungeon can't be too impressive. Robert finds it interesting that the treasure chest only opens after defeating the boss. Tao says that Robert seems more interested in the treasure. Robert becomes curious about what's inside. Tao notices that Robert is trying to learn Ki breathing quickly, and thinks maybe she has found a winner for herself, and her grandfather would approve him as her fiancé. Robert suggests opening the treasure, and Tao agrees, but she doubts there might be anything good in it. As they open the box, they're suddenly attacked by a powerful force that cuts through the ground. Suddenly, a lich comes out from under the box. Robert asks if it's a new boss. Tao says the boss monster is a lich. Robert asks Tao what type of creature a lich is. Tao reassures him and tells him to leave the dungeon. However, Robert wants to stay and watch. Tao then pushes Robert out of the dungeon using key power thinking it will keep him safe, but it may cause some damage. Now, the Lich starts attacking Tao. She tries to dodge the attacks, and is surprised to find that such a weak dungeon has a strong monster like a Lich. She thinks that even a ranked adventurer would struggle against it. Then Tao decides to distract the monster to give Robert enough time to escape. Robert finds that Tao made him fly in the air to send him out of the dungeon, but he's still curious about key in dungeons. He uses his magic barrier to stop there, and the magic barrier eliminates two small monsters. He wonders if it's a good idea to return to the dungeon when he doesn't know why Tao sent him away. He asks Grimm what he thinks to clear things up, but Grimm doesn't respond. He sounds scared and asks Lloyd to come home soon to help him. Meanwhile, Tao gets hurt while fighting with the Lich Monster. She realizes she can't win and may be eliminated soon. Then she thinks that Robert might have escaped, so maybe she should also try to escape. The Lich found that Tao is using key techniques, which are a kind of foreign magic. He mentions that he has eaten someone with similar abilities before, but he thought it was just a lower form of magic. He explains that by eating the souls of adventurers, he gained his wisdom and skills. The Lich tells Tao that she wasn't worth eating, but he mentions that Robert reacted quickly to his attack. Tao replies that he and Robert are different. She feels Robert even finds something interesting about a small pebble on the road, which makes her happy. She mentions that people on the continent don't value key techniques much, but Robert got impressed after knowing about it. Lich asks her why he should care. Then Tao uses her key techniques to attack him, but a barrier protects him. Lich says it's a waste of time, but Tao continues to attack and says she also doesn't care. Since she was five years old, every day she has been training to use key power. No matter if it rained or snowed, she focused only on training, doing nothing else like getting a boyfriend. She unleashes a full power key blast at close range, and breaks through Lich's barrier, warning him not to mess with her. However, she feels tired and realizes that she can't keep it up, because she has used too much key. She couldn't move at all, not even her finger. She is shocked to see that the powerful attack she used didn't even scratch the Lich, and realizes he is a powerful monster. Lich says that her skills are weak compared to his, and mentions that she has wasted her life trying to fight him. Then, the Lich uses a powerful attack on her, but Robert arrives and saves her, asking her if she is giving up. He says to Tao that he is taking over the fight because he needs to return home as soon as possible, and he will defeat the Lich quickly. Tao asks Robert if it is a barrier and why he is there. Robert suddenly appears behind the Lich using a spell, 
When the Lich sees this, he gets shocked and asks if Robert just used an air class spell. Full sprint, which is very fast. The Lich is surprised because it is not possible without incantation. Then Lich tries to attack Robert, but Robert makes a strong protective shield around himself. Robert thinks of combining key and mana at the same time. Lich is surprised as he is not able to break his barrier. Robert feels like he is getting closer to figuring something out. He remembers that Tao told him to focus, so he takes a deep breath and uses the full sprint spell again. Lich attacks him again, but it doesn't make a single scratch. Robert broke his own barrier as it was getting in his way of activating his key. Lich thinks Robert's barrier was broken due to his magic and starts attacking him. But Tao notices that Robert broke the barrier himself to get more air and become stronger. Robert begins combining key and mana while dodging the Lich's attacks. He uses the combination of key and mana to counter the Lich's attack. He realizes it wasn't strong enough to reach Lich and thinks that the magic needed to be thinner to travel farther. Robert starts attacking, but Lich uses his magic to protect himself. However, Robert keeps attacking over and over again. Instead of getting scared, Robert seems to be enjoying the fight and says that he still has more ideas to try out. He asks Lich to let him enjoy the fight. Then Lich notices that Robert is attacking very fast without even using incantation, and he wonders if these are the key techniques. Lich is surprised because he thought Robert was a mage, and he couldn't understand how these simple key techniques could match his sorcery. Now Robert has started making his attacks even faster and sharper. He attacks with powerful magic and cuts Lich with his barrier into two pieces, and the Lich disappears after being eliminated. Robert says he figured it out. After the fight, Tao and Robert go back to the treasure chest, where Tao says that this was a big waste of time as inside the treasure chest. They found a knife. Tao felt disappointed, saying all that trouble, and this is all they got. Robert thought the knife might be enchanted with mana. She doubts about the enchantment if it's good or not. Robert asks her if he can keep the knife, and Tao agrees. Suddenly, Robert notices the treasure chest sinking down and asks what is happening. Tao explains that this is what happens when the treasure is taken, and the dungeon starts to fall apart. Then Robert says it's similar to a lizard detaching its tail to survive. He explains that the treasure chest is the core of a dungeon, which grows slowly around magical items dropped by people. When adventurers fail to defeat the dungeon, it absorbs their gear and grows stronger. And when it seems like the dungeon will be cleared, it offers one of the items it absorbed to escape. Robert finds this survival mechanism fascinating. Tao doesn't seem interested and asks to run because the dungeon is collapsing. Robert quickly grabs the treasure chest, and they leave the dungeon before it closes. Robert talks about how dungeons gather strength underground and become dungeons again. Tao comes to know that Robert is an incredible mage. She asks him why he used key techniques instead of magic in the fight. She wonders if he did it for her, or if he was teasing her. Robert says he thought it would be fun. Then Robert realizes that he forgot about going back home and flies away from there. Tao tells Robert about the special move he used at the end, called the Keyblade, and she thinks even she couldn't use it properly yet. Tao decides to train more to become a fascinating girl. Robert thinks that's a great idea and mentions he always enjoys improving himself, whether it's magic magic or key techniques. He suggests they should improve together and leaves from there. Tao then says she needs to work on herself so she could catch Robert's attention. But she realizes he hasn't told her where he lives, so she screams out, asking him to let her know how to find him. Robert transforms back into Lloyd and returns to the castle. He enters through a window and asks Grimm if he is okay. Inside, Grimm is badly bitten, thinking about Silpha and explaining what has happened. Grimm tells Lloyd that while training, Silpha found him too weak and punished him. He sadly mentions that despite being a demon, he doesn't stand a chance against her. Grimm tearfully complains to Lloyd that he had promised to come back quickly. Lloyd apologizes to him. After some time, Grimm asks Lloyd if he was late because of the useless knife. Lloyd says sorry again, and tells him that the knife is very special as it is enhanced. Then he puts the knife in hot water and removes a layer to reveal mana essence, which is used for enchantment magic. This means anyone can write magic formulas on the weapon to make it stronger. Lloyd guesses the knife has been enchanted to boost power. Grimm asks Lloyd if he can study enchantment magic too, but Lloyd says it's not that easy. He does some experiments and finds that magic words should be written in an order, so that it can work. If done wrongly, then it will fail and both the essence and the weapon are wasted. He uses a water class spell, and says that they're going to analyze the magic essence, and make some themselves. He explains that usually water spells are used to purify dirty water, but if they keep making it purer, it can separate all the base elements. Lloyd finally finds that it's made from oil, silver, and hematide. Then Grimm says hematide is made from powdering a monster's core, and that's plenty rare. 
Lloyd says they have the dungeon's core, and he can make some from it. Both get excited, and say now they need to get oil, silver, and make a lot of weapons. Lloyd goes to get silver coins from his father. His father asks if he's sure he doesn't want gold instead, but Lloyd says silver is okay. His father thinks Lloyd is humble and wonders what he'll spend the money on. Lloyd starts melting the silver with Grimm's magic. Then, Lloyd needs to defeat Silpha to get some oil. He uses magic to run faster, but Silpha still outsmarts him because she can catch him. Then Lloyd tries another magic spell, but Silpha hides and defeats him. Even though Silpha wins, she still gives Lloyd the oil. Lloyd asks if she's sure because he was supposed to only get it if he wins. Silpha says it's okay, and she's actually happy. She thinks the other day Lloyd performed poorly might be because he was having a bad day, but now she realizes it was just a fluke. Grimm, looking outside from the window, says even though he is not using magic, he's shocked she defeated him. Silpha starts thinking that Lloyd is so skilled with both magic and a sword at just 10 years old, and he could become a top knight commander when he grows up, and maybe even too good for the rank of a swordmaster. Lloyd heads out from there, promising her to fight once he's finished his work. Silpha hopes whatever he's cooking turns out great. Lloyd starts mixing silver, oil, and hematide to make mana essence. Lloyd then goes to Albert and asks for weapons to try out in hand them. Albert jokingly says it's a cute request, and asks if Lloyd really loves magic. Lloyd confirms that he does, and mentions that since Albert has a lot of royal guards, he thought he might have some spare weapons. Albert asks his guards if anyone is willing to let Lloyd strengthen their weapon. The guards take out all their swords, but they are hesitant because enchantment magic is difficult and doesn't always work well, and also they were talking about letting a 10-year-old do it. One guard says that they are giving something they need to work on to a kid to play with it. Grimm says loudly that now they have the weapons, they're gonna make them even more powerful by enchanting them a lot. Grimm notices that Lloyd is adding three layers of boost power on a sword, and he's filling every available spot with spell formulas. Lloyd breaks the sword while enhancing it, because he puts too many spells on it. He feels bad because the steel couldn't handle the magic. Grimm tells him that this is just the beginning and cheers him up. Lloyd fails so many times but eventually succeeds. He gets happy to see it worked. Grimm says he knew Lloyd could do it. Lloyd thinks it was really amazing. The next day, Lloyd shows the improved weapons to Albert and apologizes for wasting 70 out of 120. But Albert is surprised to see that 50 swords were successful. Lloyd thought he would have succeeded with 80 swords, but he added more spells and failed. Albert is shocked to see the sword, and thinks that top enchanters only have a success rate of 10%, and Lloyd did it better. Albert finds that Lloyd might be even more talented than he realizes. Then a guard asks another one if it's really amazing. Another guard disagrees, believing it's obviously not true. They think Lloyd probably stopped trying after ruining 70 swords, as the remaining 50 look normal, and wonder even if the sword is sharper now. When the guard tries to put the sword in its sheath, it cuts into two pieces. Then Albert is surprised to see a highly enhanced sword. Lloyd says he hopes to see them used in battle if possible. Albert agrees and asks if Lloyd wants to come along with him, as their father has a task for him to go on a monster hunt, and Lloyd gets happy after hearing that. In the next morning, Lloyd, Albert, Silpha, and some guards are on their way to hunt monsters. While they are halfway there, Lloyd asks Silpha if the monsters are in these woods. Silpha says no, as she has heard they are near the lake further down the road. Lloyd understands, and Silpha asks if he is excited about it. And Lloyd agrees because he doesn't often get to leave the castle, and he also wants to see how well his enchanted weapons work. Albert asks Silpha if she ever lets Lloyd out of her sight. Silpha replies that she's thankful to him for letting her go with them. Albert agrees, saying it's obvious as she's Lloyd's teacher and bodyguard. He says that he's sure she would have missed Lloyd. Silpha agrees, saying she's his teacher. Then Albert sarcastically asks if Silpha has any other, maybe more special feelings for Lloyd. But Silpha gets offended and scares him by pulling out her sword, but Albert quickly says he was joking. Silpha feels something strange and says, looks like they have guests, and the guards also confirm it's an enemy attack, who are armed with steel weapons. One guard tells that it's a good warm-up for them to fight these creatures, and orders everyone to defend Prince Albert. Lloyd says he's scared, but Grimms tells him that he knows that he has already sensed them. Then Lloyd explains a special technique called spectral detection, which is taught by Tao. It lets him sense things around him by using key breathing, 
It's a basic skill, but very useful. Grimm thinks Lloyd is becoming more scary every day, as he always has spectral detection and a protective barrier active. The monsters and guards start fighting, but the guards are surprised because their weapons are unusually sharp. Mentioning that it feels like cutting through steel equipment like paper, Lloyd finds that his enchanted magic has worked. He notices how amazed and scared the guards are, feeling like kids with dangerous toys for the first time. After the fight finishes, Albert points out that it's all because of Lloyd's magic of enchanting weapons. He further says that he is proud of him, as he is also amazed to see the enchanted weapons. Silpha agrees and calls Lloyd wonderful. However, Lloyd is pretty sure he didn't enchant Silpha's weapon. Suddenly, a creature appears and tries to attack them. But then Tao arrives and defeats the creature. She explains that she felt the presence of the creature and rushed to help, and then she introduces herself as Tao the Adventurer. Lloyd is surprised to see her and accidentally calls her by her name, Tao. He instantly realizes that he almost called her as Robert does, as he never thought she would show up like this. Tao then asks Lloyd if he's practicing key breathing. She mentions sensing Robert and notices that Lloyd looks a bit like him. Out of nowhere, a creature tries to attack Tao from behind. But in the meantime, Silpha steps in to stop it. She appreciates Tao's help, but also reminds her not to get in the way while she's dealing with it. She also warns Tao not to get too friendly with Prince Lloyd. Then Tao explains that she also sensed the creature behind her and advises Silpha not to underestimate her techniques. Albert interrupts them and thanks Tao for her help. He then suggests Tao join them on their way to the lake. At the lake, Albert thanks Tao for helping them, and then he introduces himself as Albert, the second prince of Saloon. Tao gets nervous upon hearing that he is a prince, and apologizes to Albert if she said anything wrong. She notices that Albert and Robert look similar, but she doesn't think that Albert is the person she was sensing earlier. Albert asks if he looks like someone she knows, and Tao wonders where the kid she met before went. Albert asks if she's referring to Lloyd. Meanwhile, Lloyd thinks that he made a mistake by using spectral detection, and Tao noticed more than he expected. Grimms warns him that stopping now would be suspicious. Lloyd feels stuck and decides to hide in a tent until the monster comes. Inside the tent, he finds Silpha changing her clothes and asks her why she's there. Silpha explains there was monster tomato juice on her, so she wanted to change. Then Lloyd asks why she's changing in his tent. Silpha says it's because she'll be sleeping there tonight since all the guards outside belong to Prince Albert, and she's the only one protecting him. Lloyd suggests he can take care of himself, but she grabs him between her legs considering Tao as a threat for him. Suddenly, Tao comes in saying she thought she felt Robert nearby, but when she saw Silpha sitting on Lloyd, she asked what Silpha was doing. In response, Silpha threw a knife at Tao, but Tao caught it. Then Silpha calls Tao an idiot. This made Tao angry, and she accused Silpha of being a perverted maid. Silpha then tells Tao to stop giving Lloyd inappropriate looks, but Tao denies that she is not doing that. Meanwhile, Lloyd sneaks away and thinks it's going to be more suffocating than the castle. Then Albert sarcastically calls Lloyd a lady killer, but Lloyd wonders why. Albert mentions that Silpha has changed since she started taking care of Lloyd. Meanwhile, Silpha asks Tao why she is even there, to which Tao replies that she senses creatures while she is working. Silpha wonders if Tao's claim is true. Albert tells Lloyd that Silpha looks at him like a woman looks at a man. Grimm tells Lloyd he's a hit with girls. Then Albert advises him to be cautious because relationships with women can be tricky. When Silpha and Tao start arguing, the guards suggest fighting instead. But Silpha and Tao feel insulted and take down the guards in a short time. Then Tao tells Silpha that she was hired to repair an old shrine on top of a hill. Silpha sarcastically tells Tao to hurry along. Then Tao angrily responds that she doesn't need to tell what she had to do. Albert intervenes, saying it's risky to go alone and praises Tao's ability to sense danger. He suggests Tao stay with their group until morning and act as a lookout. Suddenly, a bear wolf shows up, and seeing the monster everyone gets ready to fight. Meanwhile, Lloyd is not scared at all as he thinks the monster is cool. Then the guards tell everyone to stay back and watch for a chance to attack. Meanwhile, Silpha tells Lloyd to stay behind her to stay safe. Lloyd is amazed to see how fast the bear wolf is. Even though he is huge, he asks Grimm if he's right. But Grimm is distracted by something at the top of a hill. And looking at the hill, Grimm wonders if it's a collapsed shrine. Meanwhile, Tao is fighting well and helping the guards. Then Albert steps up and pulls out his sword, which Lloyd enchanted to make it super powerful. He tells the monster that he's not fighting because he hates it, but because it's causing trouble for the villages. Then he uses a special attack called Pelance and Sinis and takes down the bear wolf in one hit. Everyone starts cheering for Albert, and they are amazed to see how strong he is. 
but Albert gives credit to Lloyd, saying that it's all because of Lloyd's enchantment on his sword. Lloyd is happy to see that his enchantment works so well. But then Grimm interrupts, telling Lloyd to forget about that because he remembered something important, and tells him that there's a demon sealed in the shrine on top of the hill. Meanwhile, Beowulf stands up again, which surprises Albert. He wonders how the monster he just defeated is still standing. But then, he notices that more monsters are around and wonders where they came from. Suddenly, a voice comes from Beowulf, calling them morons. It's a demon named Pazuzu. He introduces himself to them and warns that they all have to pay for harming his minions. Albert and Tao are shocked to see a demon inside Beowulf's mouth. Meanwhile, Pazuzu commands the monsters to attack. But when Albert and Tao try to fight back, they notice something strange. The monsters heal instantly after being attacked. Albert realizes that these monsters are much different from the ones he's faced before, as some even seem like mixed breeds. He suspects that the demon Pazuzu is controlling them from behind. Then Lloyd asks Grimm if Pazuzu is the demon who was trapped in the shrine and broke it out. He further asks Grimm if he knows Pazuzu because they're both demons. Grimm says no, but he explains that Pazuzu is using his magic to control the monsters, which he compares to using strings of magic to control them like puppets. And because of this, the monsters think Pazuzu is their leader. Grimm also says that Pazuzu can also give them magic energy using mana transmutation, which makes them heal quickly. And unless they defeat Pazuzu, the monsters won't stop. Hearing this, Lloyd gets excited and asks Grimm to teach him this magic. But Grimm thinks it's not the right time because everyone is fighting for their lives. Lloyd insists, but Grimm is still unsure what to do. Meanwhile, Grimm starts teaching Lloyd about mana manipulation, mentioning that Pazuzu is proficient at it, and with its help, he controls the monsters. Grimm tells Lloyd that manipulating mana is tricky, and they will start with simple tasks like adding color and scent. However, Lloyd easily manages to make his mana pink, shaped like a flower, and adds a scent. Grimm is impressed by Lloyd's quick progress. Back in the fight, Pazuzu wonders how Silpha is so skilled in battle. Meanwhile, Silpha asks a guard if she can borrow his sword. Seeing Silpha's impressive fighting, Pazuzu wonders if she's just a babysitter, as he is amazed by her flawless defense. But Silpha gets excited by knowing that the sword she borrowed is enchanted by Prince Lloyd, and is proud of him. Curious about Lloyd's connection to Silpha, Pazuzu decides to dissect Lloyd to understand more, and he will examine his organs. Pazuzu moves so fast, and then attacks Silpha, and also succeeds in devouring her. But Silpha cuts Pazuzu in half, revealing her intense fighting spirit. Then she uses her sword technique, twin dragons rising, and tears apart the bear wolf. She then uses the double tiger claw and fang technique and defeated the monster. Pazuzu then emerged from the bear wolf. Everyone is shocked to see Silpha in her fighting mode. Lloyd sees how Silpha looks when she gets serious, and then he memorizes it and makes a doll with his colored mana. Silpha approaches Pazuzu, saying that even touching Prince Lloyd is enough to make her laugh. The only thing Pazuzu is fit to feel is her master's blade. Silpha then tells Pazuzu to make his peace. Suddenly, all the monsters start coming back to life, and then Pazuzu releases miasma from his mouth. Albert and Tao start fighting the monsters, but a guard wonders how monsters are still alive as they are already beaten. Albert explains to the guards that they need to defeat the demon, otherwise the monsters will keep regenerating. Then he suggests that they should go help Silpha, but they all collapse when they breathe the miasma. Pazuzu mentions that it's been a long time since he unleashed his minions, and he can't believe they're being defeated so easily. Then he attacks Silpha with a strong move. Seeing this, Albert tries to stand up, but he can't do to the miasma. Pazuzu reveals that anyone who breathes in the miasma will be under his control, and it's called the miasma of domination. Meanwhile, Silpha sarcastically mentions his bad smell, but Pozuzu gets angry hearing this and attacks her again. However, Tao steps in to protect her. Silpha tells Tao to mind her own business, mentioning she is fine, but Tao doesn't believe her and tells her to run if she can. Silpha suggests Tao should run to Prince Lloyd instead, and then she falls. After seeing this, Pozuzu mentions Silpha's strength for resisting him despite breathing his dangerous miasma. He's surprised that Tao isn't under his control and wonders why. Tao tries to attack Pozuzu, but he easily stops her, and notices she's using a special breathing technique to resist inhaling the miasma. However, Tao realizes her breathing is becoming difficult now. Pozuzu asks why she hasn't run away if she can still move, and asks her if she wants to become his servant. Tao fights back against Pozuzu, telling him to go away. She says she couldn't leave someone in trouble, and then uses a powerful attack called Thunderquake Pulse on Pozuzu. However, she realizes she has used too much energy, and now needs to calm down before Pozuzu could attack back. Suddenly, 
Pazuzu's minion attacks Tao, and she is surprised to see that the minions have already healed from their injuries. Pazuzu asks Tao who she is talking about when she mentions helping someone, as he only sees defeated enemies on the ground. He shows her his loyal minions, saying they always stood up for him and asks if that isn't true loyalty. Then Pazuzu uses his power to control her. He asks her if she still doesn't want to serve him, and give him her whole life. Tao realizes that she has not mistaken because she feels Robert's presence nearby. Even though there's a lot of bad energy around from Pazuzu, she can still sense Robert, and it gives her strength. When Pazuzu asks who she's referring to, Tao boldly says that he is Robert, who is the most amazing guy, and he is on his way to defeat Pazuzu. Then suddenly, the minion devours her. Pazuzu mentions how sad it is to be human and incapable of understanding his devilish charm. Pazuzu moves to Silpha and thinks she needs to pay him. He believes she would be a good addition to his minions, even though it might take some effort to control her. And then Pazuzu plans to use his power to make her serve him until she dies. Then Lloyd tells Pazuzu that's how he got the bear wolves to obey him. Pazuzu admits that and tells him he killed their parents and manipulated the young bear wolves with his powers. Lloyd finds Pazuzu's actions terrible, but suddenly Pazuzu realizes that Lloyd can still move freely within his powers. Pazuzu asks Lloyd if he thinks he can just walk in the miasma of domination. Then he notices Grimm and wonders if Grimm is actually a demon. He asks Grimm if he's protecting Lloyd. Pazuzu is shocked that a demon would serve a human, and asks Grimm why he looks so disgusted. He accuses Grimm of being a disgrace to their kind. Grimm gets angry and tells Pazuzu that he had considered giving him advice as a fellow demon, but now he just wants to see Pazuzu fail. Pazuzu refuses to listen and orders his minions to attack. Lloyd thinks it's the perfect time to try his mana transmutation. Grimm warns him that there are a lot of monsters around, so he'll need to use a lot of mana for it. Lloyd then uses his mana transmutation, but Pazuzu is shocked to see his minions transformed into cute little creatures in a field of flowers. Lloyd tells him that he has removed Pazuzu's control over the bear wolves. He is also amazed at how well his mana transmutation worked. Then he is surprised at how fluffy the creatures are. Grimm tells that all the monsters are now completely taken with Lloyd's mana. Lloyd asks if Grimm is affected too. Lloyd then approaches a minion and asks him to split Tao. Then he finds out that Tao is okay. Pazuzu is amazed at Lloyd's ability to turn mana into a field of flowers so quickly, and thinks Lloyd must be an incredible sorcerer. Then Pazuzu uses his miasma to command his minions to wake up. But Grimm informs Pazuzu that his minions already remembered something, their pride as monsters and the fact that Pazuzu killed their parents. Then the monsters turn against Pazuzu and attack him. Lloyd is surprised by the monsters' coordinated attack and realizes that they are much stronger than he thought. Despite this, Pozuzu fights back and insults the monsters by calling them mangy mutts and flea-bitten wastes. He reminds them that he is the one who raised them, and now they're only attacking him because he killed their parents. Pozuzu then taunts Lloyd, saying that it doesn't matter what spells he tries as they won't work on a demon like him. Then Lloyd and Grimm start talking about demons and magic. Grimm says demons can't be killed by magic as it's never happened before. Meanwhile, Pazuzu gets angry and says that the moment he stops giving mana to his minions, he becomes more powerful. Suddenly, the field of flowers that Lloyd created gets destroyed. Lloyd finds it interesting and wonders why demons don't die easily, and what it would take to kill the demon. Then Grimm tells Pazuzu why his mana didn't affect Lloyd. Lloyd hides his mana to avoid standing out, and it's hard work to keep it restrained all the time. Grimm then tells him that even his strong mana wouldn't be enough to affect Lloyd. Lloyd says he has many spells he wants to try, and he's excited to test them. He tells Pazuzu that, with him, he can use his magic without holding back. Pazuzu is surprised to see how much mana Lloyd has, and wonders if he's still in a nightmare. Lloyd tries to trap Pazuzu in a barrier, but Pazuzu escapes and wonders why Lloyd tried to trap him, and when Lloyd even enchanted the spell, Pazuzu realizes that Lloyd isn't trying to fight, but he is trying to put him in a cage. Lloyd tries to trap Pazuzu with barriers, but Pazuzu escapes them easily. Pazuzu gets scared, but thinks he could dodge Lloyd's spells because he's amazing. Then Lloyd says he could cast around 20 spells at once, and even more with Grimm's help. He casts many spells, but Pazuzu barely escapes. Lloyd then uses his dimensional enclosure to catch Pazuzu in a barrier, and this time he succeeds. Pazuzu asks Lloyd what he is going to do with him now as he is worried that Lloyd might turn him into a lab animal. He calls Lloyd a psychotic sorcerer and begs to be freed. 
Lloyd is confused because magic didn't work on Pazuzu. Then he accuses Pazuzu of doing experiments on bear wolves that changed them into different creatures. Lloyd tells Pazuzu to stop squirming, assuming that he may have already done many experiments. Pazuzu gets really mad and asks Lloyd how he dares to compare him to others. As he sees himself as the top demon who will also rule the whole world, Pazuzu tells Lloyd that he's never faced magic like Lloyd's before, and there is also a chance he could even die from it. However, Lloyd starts casting many powerful spells one after another. Pazuzu asks for a moment, but Lloyd keeps casting as he estimates to enchant about 240 spells a minute. He decides to keep it up for 30 minutes. But then he sees Pozuzu and gets worried that he might have died. Then Grimm explains that while magic doesn't usually affect demons much, Lloyd's constant barrage can cause stress over time. Lloyd opens the barriers to see what happened. Meanwhile, Pozuzu thinks he spent a long time raising monsters and planning to rule the world. But why everything falls apart so easily? After hearing all that, Lloyd just goes like, huh. Suddenly, Albert and everyone else start waking up. And Lloyd realizes that everyone's waking up. So now he needs to come up with an excuse. Then Grimm tells Pazuzu people don't want leaders who complain all the time. He says he likes Lloyd because Lloyd does what he enjoys in his own way. He then tells Pazuzu that he is just gathering strength for revenge against Lloyd. Pazuzu laughs and says he lost because he wasn't having enough fun. And then Pazuzu tells Grimm that he trusts his ambition. Grimm devours Pazuzu and gains incredible power. Feeling that his mana has been restored a bit, making his revenge easier. Lloyd starts making excuses, saying a sorcerer named Robert came and defeated the demon to save everyone. Tao hears Robert's name and gets excited and asks if Robert is around. Meanwhile, Grimm thinks that he couldn't beat Lloyd yet. Then Prince Albert, Lloyd, and Silver return to the castle after defeating the monster, where people are cheering for them. At the castle, the king praises Albert for defeating the demon and dealing with the monster. He says he is impressed, but questions Albert about his decision to go with only his guards. Albert admits it, and says he has no excuse. The king then asks where the adventurers who helped them are. Albert says Robert disappeared before they woke up, and Tao ran after him before he could thank her. Then the king acknowledges that Robert and Tao saved everyone, and he is more interested in Robert's strength. Albert tells the king that he thinks Lloyd did the most important work during their hunt against monsters, and he believes that Lloyd should be part of the royal family's succession because Lloyd's magical enchantment on their weapons protected them from harm. Albert thinks Lloyd is very talented and hardworking, so he also deserves to be king. But the king worries that making Lloyd part of the succession might create competition for Albert. But Albert says if he isn't the best choice to rule the kingdom, then it's okay. As he thinks the kingdom's welfare is more important than anything else, and he doesn't see why Lloyd's age should exclude him from consideration. The king asks if Lloyd wants to take part in the race for the throne, but Lloyd just refuses it. The next morning, Lloyd is playing with a bear wolf. He is surprised that one of Pazuzu's minions followed them home, while the others stayed in the woods. Lloyd says the bear wolf is getting fluffier and cuter. Then Grimm wonders why he didn't get the same reaction and make himself fluffy. Grimm then says Lloyd's magic made the bear wolf very tame, and Lloyd tells Grimm, Fluffy too. Grimm explains that Lloyd's magic calmed down the other bear wolves, so they shouldn't cause any problems. Then Silpha arrives and says the bear wolf seems to like Lloyd a lot. Lloyd tells Silpha that he named it Shiro because of its color, which Silpha thinks is a good choice. Then Lloyd tells Silpha that he wants to teach the bear wolf many things, but he's unsure how to communicate effectively with him. Silpha informs him that complicated instructions are usually for monster tamers. Meanwhile, Grimm wonders why Lloyd isn't interested in becoming king. Silpha mentions that she has heard about controlling monsters with mana, which Lloyd also finds fun, and says he will also give it a try. Meanwhile, Grimm thinks that Lloyd only cares about magic. Silpha reassures Lloyd that she believes in him. She tells Lloyd that Prince Albert also thinks that Lloyd will have no trouble commanding the monsters. Elsewhere, the king and Albert notice Lloyd's humility. The king thinks Lloyd is too modest but Albert believes kingship might be a minor role for Lloyd. Then the king expresses excitement about Lloyd's future. Meanwhile, Lloyd teaches Shiro how to sit, shake hands, and stand up. Silpha is also impressed by Lloyd. Then, Lloyd says that Shiro learns simple commands quickly, but he is not sure what will happen if he asks Shiro to do some complex things, like spinning around three times, or barking in different ways, and other things. 
He is not sure how to make Shiro understand such complicated instructions easily. He tells Silpha that he is trying to send a command spell using his mana to Shiro. But Shiro doesn't understand it and gets confused. Then he says he hopes he can find someone who knows a lot about monsters, maybe an expert type to help him. Silpha replies that she knows someone, and she is pretty sure about it. She then suggests they should go to Princess Ali's garden tower. However, she's not sure if it's the best idea. Then they reach Princess Ali's garden tower. Grim thinks the tower is really something, and then he asks Lloyd who Ali's is. Lloyd says that she is his sister, the sixth princess of Saloum, and also that she is three years older than him. Lloyd further mentions that Ali's loves all kinds of animals, not just cats and dogs, but also reptiles, birds, and even monsters, all of which she can keep in her tower. When Princess Ali sees Lloyd in her garden, she gets excited and hugs him, saying it's good to see him. Then she just kisses Lloyd, which shocks Silpha. Silpha then says it's an emergency, and now she has to revive Lloyd with a kiss. Eris comes there and asks Ali why she always kisses Lloyd when she sees him. Ali says, because he's cute. Then Ali asks what brings them there, assuming it might be about the bear wolf they have with them. Lloyd tells her the bear wolf's name is Shiro, and says he's impressed that Ali recognizes Shiro as a bear wolf so easily. Ali replies it's just instinct, as she believes that the mana thing has something to do with it. Silpha suggests to Lloyd that they should leave because she doesn't think Princess Ali understands the concept of mana. She also doubts that Ali could be able to explain how to communicate with monsters. However, Lloyd wants to wait a bit longer, and then asks Ali if she can show them one of her monsters. Ali replies that she has already called one, then she introduces them to Liru, the lesser Fenrir. Grim is surprised because Liru is a higher class of Beowulf. Lloyd is also amazed that Liru is able to slip past his presence detection easily. Then Ali returns the hairband Liru snatched from Silpha. However, Lloyd is still confused as he wonders when Ali gave the command to Liru. He realizes that the Fenrir knows to approach while their backs are turned. Lloyd thinks that if Ali might have told Liru to snatch Silpha's hairband without getting noticed and thinks it must be a very complex order. He wonders how Ali's manages it so easily, making him curious to find out more about it. Then Lloyd stands up and asks Ali to teach him how to communicate with Shiro. Ali tells him that it won't be easy, but Lloyd says that he likes to face challenges. Then Ali explains that the key to communicating with animals is love, but Lloyd wonders how, so Ali clarifies that if he loves them, then he can learn to understand any monster and communicate with them. To demonstrate, she commands monsters to come to her to show how it works. Works. Meanwhile, Eris says Ali's might be a prodigy or have a special charm with animals, but Ali disagrees, saying anyone could learn with the right feeling. Then Ali commands the animals to stick to Lloyd, Silpha, and Eris. Silpha suggests that they should go back on their way, doubting that love can help in this case. But when Silpha sees Lloyd with the animals, she wonders if Lloyd is showing interest in love. Then Silpha starts thinking Lloyd hugged her and tells her that she is always kind and warm. Silpha replies that it is only because of love, which Lloyd finds interesting. He asks her to teach him more, and Silpha eagerly agrees. Back to the present, Lloyd explains that he was giving Shiro direct orders, but his sister Ali doesn't command her animals instead. She shares her thoughts with them. Ali connects to animals with mana, giving them a vision of what she wants without speaking. When Lloyd learns that Ali shares her mental images instead of giving orders, he tries it too. Eris is surprised because Lloyd doesn't give commands, but Shiro follows Lloyd's mental images perfectly, which impresses Eris. She says that Lloyd is very talented. Silpha agrees, but says that it is a bit different from what she has imagined. Then Ali says it isn't about will or control, but it's all about love. Lloyd agrees, saying love is important and helps create a connection with the animals. Hearing this, Ali grabs Lloyd again, and all the animals stick to them because Ali is still connected to them. Lloyd reminds her to stop sharing her mana and asks Silpha and Eris to step back. When they are returning, Lloyd says, that is a real mess, to which Silpha says she is so sorry for that. But Lloyd says that now he has started to figure out how to connect with monsters. Silpha is relieved and asks Lloyd to put the same effort into his sword training. In the meantime, Albert arrives there, saying he needs to talk to Lloyd. Silpha insists Lloyd needs to practice, but Albert argues that she shouldn't try to monopolize Lloyd. Lloyd asks Albert why he's there, and Albert says that he wants to introduce Lloyd to someone. 
Lloyd wonders who he is. Then Albert introduces him to his older brother Diane, who is the fourth prince of the kingdom. Diane asks Lloyd if he enchanted the spellbound sword, and Lloyd confirms it. But Diane doesn't believe and says he wants to see if Lloyd is really capable. Then Albert tells Lloyd about Diane that when Diane was 10, he went to a neighboring country, Bartram, which is known for smithing, and from there Diane got interested in enchanting. Lloyd says that he is also impressed by Diane's dedication to studying abroad for the kingdom. But then Diane cuts him off, saying it's not about him, and asks Lloyd to start enchanting, telling him that he already has all the necessary materials. Diane is surprised to see that Lloyd is enchanting a sword. Diane thinks enchantment is a very advanced skill, but he wonders how Lloyd is able to apply it to a spellbound sword, as that's beyond what they can do in Bartram. Diane thinks if Lloyd has started talking this nonsense in the seven years since he last saw him. But then Lloyd shows the enchanted sword to Diane and asks, how does that look? Meanwhile, Albert thinks even an amateur can see that Lloyd's enchanting technique is unique, as it allows him to be both fast and precise. However, Diane is shocked to see the sword and asks Lloyd, what kind of spell engraving is this? As the sword has reinforced strength, elasticity, self-cleaning, and self-repair. Diane then gets impressed by Lloyd's enchanting and grabs him, saying that with Lloyd's help, he might actually achieve his dream of creating the ultimate spellbound sword. He says that when he forges the steel and Lloyd engraves the spell onto it, then it will become more advanced than usual, and this will create a super weapon that's only possible when an enchanter and a smith work together. Diane tells Lloyd that as a kid, he loved sorcery but didn't have the talent for it. However, spellbound swords are amazing because anyone can swing one like making flames spew out and wind blast forth. Diane expresses his dream and says he wants their country to be a place where everyone can use magic by wielding spellbound swords someday. Lloyd asks if that means people who can't use magic will be able to use it with spellbound swords. Then he thinks it wouldn't matter much to him, but he's interested in how they are made. Lloyd gets ready and asks Diane to start. Diane agrees and asks him to call the boss. Albert leaves from there, saying he has official business to attend. Now, Lloyd and Diane have started making enchanted weapons. Lloyd asks Diane what kind of magic sword they should use. Diane replies it should be a sword that shoots fire when anyone swings it, as what could be cooler than that? Then Lloyd suggests using Peelance and Sinis, but Diane says it won't work because the casting formula for Peelance and Sinis has 14 parts, and a spellbound sword can only hold 5 parts. Lloyd suggests compressing it down to 2 parts, then he applies it, but the steel shatters. Lloyd wonders if the weight of Peelance and Sinis is too much and thinks maybe they should compress it less, to 3 parts, or split it into 4. Then he tells Diane to try it again. Meanwhile, Silpha and Shiro watch them quietly. Lloyd tries many times to enchant the steel, but it keeps breaking. Then Silpha joins them, but it still keeps breaking. However, Lloyd apologizes, saying it is his fault, and that he has also wasted a lot of mana essence. But he wonders why it is still breaking, even though he reduced the spell to a simple fireball. Grimm finds it unusual for Lloyd to struggle so much. Diane tells Lloyd not to worry and promises to help until they succeed. Even if it is so difficult, Grimm then gives Lloyd some mana essence and Diane reassures Lloyd that they have a lot. Lloyd uses his spell pure effects to check the quality of the mana essence and finds it has very little hematide. This amount might be enough for regular enchanting, but a spellbound sword needs a lot more. Diane also realizes that they are using low quality mana essence. Lloyd asks him if they have any hematide, which is made from the monster cores. Diane replies that they don't have it, as it is very rare. Lloyd thinks he might have to go hunt monsters in a dungeon to get hematide. Meanwhile, Silpha suggests that they could hunt monsters together now, but Lloyd remembers a past incident with Tao, and asks Silpha how a prince like him can go to a dungeon. Silpha replies that she had discussed it with the king after their recent encounter with monsters, and he also thought it would be a good idea for Lloyd to explore and see more of the world. Silpha asks Lloyd if they should go to the first stop on any adventurer's journey. Then they head to an adventurer's guild where Katerina welcomes them, and says she needs their details and the job they want to register under. Silpha tells him to write the truth, and Katerina says once they're done, place their hand on the crystal ball, which will measure their strengths and set their adventurer rank. Lloyd remembers using a similar crystal ball when he enrolls at the Magic Academy in his past life. It has a small amount of mana that radiates through the body when touched. Lloyd worries that touching it now might make it explode because of his strong mana, which would attract too much attention. He tries to compress his mana as small and faint as possible, like down to the size of a flea. When he touches it, Lloyd gets an overall rating of E, and everyone laughs at him, saying even the weakest adventurer 
adventurers usually get a D. But Katarina says it's remarkable because Lloyd's magic rating is an A, which is similar to an experienced sorcerer. Lloyd is surprised because he thought that he had reduced his mana to just 1% of its normal strength. Katarina assures everyone that Prince Lloyd is the most promising new adventurer since the Silver Blader. But then other adventurers ask if she's comparing Lloyd to the legendary Silver Blader, who conquers many dungeons and reaches a rank before mysteriously disappearing. They don't believe Lloyd, with his E rank, can he be compared to her? Sofa wants to go into the dungeon and do the quests, but Katarina says for that they need a skilled adventurer. Then Silpha plans to re-register, but a rude man interrupts, suggesting they should leave Lloyd behind and go on a dungeon date together. But Silpha gets angry and cuts off his mustache. Then Katarina reveals that Silpha is the famous Silver Blade adventurer, and everyone is shocked after hearing that. She then tells Silpha that re-registering will decrease her by two ranks. Suddenly, Tao appears and says, looks like someone needs help, and then she offers to help Lloyd. Silpha asks Lloyd to leave, but Tao stops her. Then Silpha asks Tao if she is always around them. Tao replies that she has been searching everywhere for Robert through every dungeon she could, but she could not find him. But she ended up getting strong enough to be a ranked. Tao then asks Silpha to introduce her to Prince Albert, so they can have a tea date in exchange for her help. Then Lloyd compliments Silpha for being a great adventurer. Silpha says she felt embarrassed because she used to be an adventurer, but she was immature back then. Then she mentions encountering dangerous enemies from the Assassin's Guild. Then Lloyd, Silpha, and Tao go to a random dungeon to find Mana Essence. Meanwhile at the castle, Albert asks Diane how things are going. Diane replies that everything is going smoothly, and mentions that Lloyd will be back soon with what they need. Then Albert says that it will still be a few more days. Diane then asks if there is going to be a war. But Albert reassures him, saying he brought them together because he wants them to get along like brothers again, and tells him that they don't need to worry about fighting. However, he acknowledges that if using spellbound swords could save even one person in the kingdom one day, then it would be wonderful. Then Albert asks Diane to continue his research on the swords, to which Diane agrees, saying that day might come sooner than Albert thought. In the meantime, Lloyd and Silver return. Albert tells Diane that when he sees Lloyd smile, it makes him feel stronger, like he can do anything, because he thinks Lloyd's happiness takes away all his worries. When Diane tests the magical weapon, it works amazingly and gives off a powerful blast, shocking everyone. Seeing the damage caused by the blast, Lloyd admits he went a bit overboard, and promises to be more careful next time. Later that night, Lloyd expresses his tiredness after doing a lot of work like gathering materials, creating magical items, and working on the mass production of weapons. He wonders if something important is about to happen. However, suddenly he notices something strange in the central garden, and thinks it's like there's a gap in space. He thinks Shiro is usually observant, but he hasn't noticed it. Suddenly, a mysterious girl appears in the garden, and that's the end of the video. Please comment and let me know if you want a recap of the next episode of this anime. As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a lot of videos just like this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Till then, goodbye.